Hey everyone, Peace Mike coming out chat. And today we've got a super special tutorial on Pfizer, which is a new platform that's coming out to help you develop web VR. And so what we have here is just an HTML page, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Now this works with the Rift or the Vive, but it also works with Google Cardboard, and that's what you're seeing on the screen right now. It's just a screen cap from my phone, and yeah, so this is the kind of scene that you guys are going to be building. Again, you can you can find a link to that in the description. I'm just going to quickly pop into Cardboard right now. And let's see, I am allowed to, so if I click on this touchpad right here, I should, yeah, just teleport. And there's one behind me. I'm not going to stretch because that's, that's one of the problems, but sitting with a bunch of wires trying to record. But yeah, that that's basically, it's really simple compared to a lot of our other videos, but Still, just the fact that it's web VR and kind of cross-platform off of just one code base is really, really cool. And like I said, uh, Hassan's going to be leading this. So yeah, just let us know in the comments, actually, what should Hassan's nickname be? I'm kind of curious to see. So I'm Fuse Man, Abdul's going to be Ghoster, but uh, let us know in the comments what Hassan should be. And with that, let's let him take it away. Hello, world. Hassan here. And in today's video, we are going to be using WebVR and specifically a platform called the Visor to build the virtual scenes using just the power of the browser. Now, you might remember that a few months ago, we released a WebVR video on A-Frame. A-Frame is great if you want to jump into WebVR and start coding. But since then, we asked ourselves, what's the best way to get started with WebVR if you don't want to code? but you just want to prototype some basic scenes and interactions. We've seen tons of different platforms since then, uh, but one of our favorites is Visor, and that's what we're going to be sharing with you today. Using the power of the browser and WebVR, Visor actually has created something that's very similar to the Unity and Unreal interface. You can use Visor to create a basic scene, you can even add some interactivity, and then you can view it using WebVR and a headset. It's really awesome. Today we're going to show you a few different examples. We're going to show you the ropes of Visor, and we'll also walk through a quick demo of how you can prototype a virtual scene that you can teleport around in. So, let's get started. For starters, you're going to want to make sure that WebVR is configured to work on your computer. In the last tutorial on A-Frame, I showed you how to get WebVR set up with an HTC Vive. So this time I'll show you how to use it with a Rift. Uh, the setup is mostly the same, and also if any of these steps don't make sense, just Google search for WebVR setup and you can find tons of guides online. So assuming that you're using Firefox Nightly, just search for Nightly in a search engine of your choosing, find it and download it. Then make sure to get the WebVR Plus plugin for your Nightly installation. And now if you're using the Rift, Open up your Oculus window, go to Settings, hit General, and be sure to allow for unknown sources. This makes it so that WebVR can pipe over its content to your Rift. So if you're using a Vive, uh, you can just look at our A-Frame video and we walk through how to set up WebVR on the Vive there. Um, or again, you can just search online and there are tons of guides that will help you. So once you have WebVR set up, go over to visor.io. And if you scroll down, you can see a gallery of tons of cool projects. Uh, you can try out all of these, assuming that WebVR is set up. And one of my favorites is actually this India 3 360 photo. So let's click on that. And now that my headset is actually plugged in, I can just move around my headset to look around the scene. You probably noticed a problem with the resolution there. I just wanted to really be clear that that's just because my computer has to render a lot. Um, in the headset, everything actually still looks fine. And we can see this all in the headset by clicking on this VR icon in WebVR. And when you look around with the headset on, you can actually see that 360 photo. So using Visor is as simple as that, and I really encourage you to look at different gallery uh, projects so that you can get a sense of what you could pull off with Visor. But now we're actually going to get started on building one of our own virtual worlds. 
Once you're ready, jump into the visor editor by hitting this try the editor button. You'll be loaded into the stock scene of a desert. Now one thing that's really cool that the visor team did is that they designed the editor to borrow from a lot of different styles that you would see in other engines such as Unity or Unreal. Uh, you can rotate the scene by left clicking and dragging, you can pan by right clicking and dragging, you can zoom in and out with your mouse scroll wheel. Um, in the top left here you have different buttons that you can use to move objects. So if I select this desert area and have move selected, I can just drag along these axes, similar to like in Unity, for example. I can also scale up the desert, I can read it, and so on. There's also this menu on the side that can be easily used to add objects into the scene. So maybe I want to add something from the mountain set. If I just click on that, then all of a sudden I've added a crystal into my scene. And there are tons of other different types of objects. It might not be that fitting, but I can also add in a tree into this desert scene. And that's pretty cool. I mean, basically all I have to do is click a few buttons, and now I'm already starting to author this virtual scene. Um, the other thing that I want to explain is that similar to many graphics programs, there's a difference between the user camera and the editor camera in Visor. Right now, I'm in the editor camera. Um, I'm moving around the scene freely. I can use this to adjust whatever I want and customize my scene. If I type a V, I switch over to the virtual camera. This is what a user would see if they started this virtual world. So that's the basics of just how you can jump into Visor and actually just start dropping in some objects. Uh, if you want a deeper dive into how Visor works and all of the possibilities, you can actually go to this tutorial section and the Visor team has created a set of blog posts and also some videos on how you can make Visor even more exciting. This is something that I haven't tried out, this HTC Vive controllers in Visor, um, but it sounds awesome. So maybe some of you want to try out making it so that you can use your controllers with WebVR and Visor. But for now, I'm going to style up a basic scene. Uh, you should probably do the same. And then after that, we are going to look into how we can teleport around that scene to finish off this video tutorial. So now I'm going to show you the world that I've gone ahead and created. You'll see that it's not much different than what I started out with. I just scaled down the size of the desert, but I also added in these two orangish objects. Now we can figure out what those are by using what's called the patch menu in Visor. And this is also a great lead into the last part, which is how do we teleport around this virtual scene. So you open the patch view in Visor by pressing the tab button on your keyboard. Um, alternatively, you can click the patches button in this menu. And what you'll see here is something that looks very similar to Unreal if you've ever used that. This is a collection of nodes that each represent different patches. So patches in Visor are essentially like a Unity prefab or uh, different types of actors and objects in the Unreal node-based uh, editing system. So if you hover over one of these patches, you'll first get an annotation of what that patch does. You can do that for any of the patches. You can also click on the pencil next to some patches to go deeper into them and see what nodes make up those patches themselves. Also, uh, in the top right here, you get a hierarchy of what you're looking at. So I'm not in root right now. I actually clicked into the lighting patch. But if I click on root, I go back to the base of my scene. Now, for example, if I click on teleport, I would go into the teleport node. And again, I can get back to the root just by clicking on this. So uh, that's a lot that I just went over there. Um, but really, if you want to know more about patches, what they mean and how to use them, I really strongly recommend the Visor tutorials um, because they go more into depth on how you can use these things and what makes them so powerful. But right now, I just want to talk about these two teleport patches and also add in a new patch so that we can jump around the scene. So when you select these teleport patches, you see those orangish objects. Um, and if you were to go into these and really read through all of this stuff, 
you'd notice that what they're doing is that when we click on these objects, um, we're updating the position of our camera, or at least that's what we're trying to do through this event that these patches are calling. The problem is, is that the standard camera doesn't work with these teleport patches. So what's cool in Visor is that the Visor team has actually created a bunch of patches that we can already use. And one of those that's relevant here is the teleport camera. So if we add this in, we can move it over to where our camera is and link up the scene to that camera. So what this node is doing is it's collecting all of the different objects that we have in our scene and then it's telling our camera to actually render those objects. So the scene just went black because similar to uh, in Unity when it gets confused about having multiple cameras, sometimes it shows something that's a little bit garbled. Same thing happens here, we have multiple cameras and that doesn't work. So I'm going to delete the old camera and now what we want to do is reload uh, with this camera with teleport. So I'm going to save this URL that I have. You should save the URL that you're using. I'm just going to restart our project. You see my recording stuff there, how that went off into an infinite inception-y type loop. So now let's reload this. Everything pops up. Uh, the sizing's a little off, uh, so we can just minimize and maximize the browser. Now when we hit tab, we can see that our camera is there uh, with teleport. So the last thing that I want to show you, and I'm not going to use the headset to do this, I'm just going to do it monoscopically, is that you can look around and click on these patches now uh, to teleport around our virtual scene. So I do need to unplug the headset and uh, my sound is going to cut out when I do that, um, but I'm going to show you that right now. Let me actually close out of Nightly. I'm going to unplug it and then show you teleportation. So what you just saw there was me moving around this virtual scene as I mentioned. Um, and if you want to try that out in VR, uh, actually the easiest way to do it is not with the Rift headset or with Visor, but one cool thing, or sorry, not with the Rift headset or with a Vive headset, but rather with something like your phone uh, on Google Cardboard or even on Gear. So the cool thing about Visor is that we can just publish to the web um, using the power of WebVR. The way that you do that is you just hit this publish button, come up with a file name that you want. I'll call this Fused VR um, Teleport. Get public. And now anyone with this URL uh, can pop into this, look around our scene, and try to teleport to those different points. So go ahead and give that a try. Um, and that actually wraps up our Visor tutorial. So again, I just wanted to call out that Visor is doing some really awesome work to make WebVR easier for everybody to develop. Um, and they actually have a lot of stuff that I know that they're personally planning on adding. But for now, it's just fun to look at Visor, see what people are creating, and also try to drag and drop and prototype some experiences of your own. So that's it for this video tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or problems, leave them in the comments and we'll do our best to help out. So see you next time.